Hey guys, I'm back. I'm back to talk about um, a, a couple of things that people started to talk about um, when I did the uh, world's best file naming system uh, video. So um, a lot of photographers started talking about raw files and DNG and the difference and the pros and cons. And f let me first say is I never shoot JPEG. I, I just got married. Yes, I have black fingernails. And yes, I have a black wedding ring on. Just got married. And the photographer shot raw, uh, shot JPEG, which I was astounded. And really the difference is, is a raw file has like, like 10 times the amount of colors in it and is more malleable and adjustable. So I'm always shooting raw. But once we get the images into the studio or we're getting them into the computer via tethered, we're first naming them properly. We take in these raw files and then we'll work with them, but in processing them, we make a set of JPEGs for the client and then we archive those JPEGs and we change the raw file to DNG. And here's why. I was the spokesperson for the Kodak DCS Pro back. That camera is not around anymore, and some of those files are no longer supported, and I can't open any of the raw files. And that's it, almost in a nutshell. I want a digital negative format that Adobe says, I mean, we're, we're thinking Adobe's going to be around for a long time, that Adobe says is the universal raw format. So that if I shoot with Sony or Panasonic or Hasselblad or Canon or any of the other things I've shot with, right, I have one raw file format to open. Just one. Nothing else. And that's really important. I want to be able to open my files up in 20 or 30 more years and never have to worry about them. There's a couple of other reasons that are really good, right? DNG is brilliant for two more things. A, it's about 30% smaller than the raw file. And Adobe says it's a lossless compression. You're not going to lose any information. It's not like a JPEG where you're throwing out part of the information. It's a lossless compression format. So it's 30% smaller than the raw file. If And for me, that's great because I shoot between the goalposts. My lighting is always between the, in the, in, in, within the histogram, right? So by being within the histogram, I'm not worried about future information to be found in the raw file through software. If you're a photojournalist and your colors and, or, and, and lighting sometimes is all over the place, you can actually embed the raw file into the DNG. It makes it still a universal format and you still have all the data of the raw file. You can do that. I don't do that. I choose the smaller file. I, like I said, my information is within the histogram. I'm not trying to grab information that's missing uh, because I was in a war zone and the exposures are all over the place. The second reason I love DNG is the XML file, the, 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 the file that's the adjustment from Lightroom or Bridge, the file that has your adjustment information is actually embedded in the DNG. It's not a sidecar. If I tell an assistant or someone to open a DNG and I already put my um, color information and color balance and the way we want the file to start if it goes to a retoucher I don't have to remember to send them the sidecar I don't have to tell someone um, that they have to send a sidecar there's no pieces to get lost it's all in the D DNG format embedded in it with all the raw processing information right so my retoucher has the starting place for where I see the file uh, should go and then they can take it from there and those are all the important steps for uh, archiving in DNG it's a universal format it's smaller than the raw file and it has the sidecar color information the color adjustments you've made in bridge or Lightroom already in it that's it